everyone, welcome back to the Within. I'm gonna go and heal myself up. It's really very sad that we can't take all these shotgun shells. But that means we're stacked on shotgun shells. Um, so for microtransactions, that's what we were talking about last episode. If you're if you're if you're curious, watch Rami Bell. Watch last episode. But hey, you don't have to if you don't want to. That's fine. Um. Microtransactions, I think, are largely a way for developers to get more money for the game, even though, like, people have already bought the game. And I don't want to say that microtransactions are, like, inherently good or bad. I think they're just something that they just are. And, like, it depends largely on the microtransaction in the game. But the point that I was trying to make is that, say, for StarCraft, I bought the game, but I've already spent, like... On DLC, I spent on about, like, $15. And then for microtransactions, I spent like another $15. So I've already sunk in like $130 into the game. Three of it being, you know, extra content the developers have added. And I think that's how developers get the money. So like now all of a sudden, instead of like just doing a single player game that they sell for $80. And let's say, for let's say the argument, let's say StarCraft 2 was $80 as well. So if they only have the $80 for the single player and they don't have any like microtransactions because they can't add any. Okay, I guess we're doing this. Oh. And with those players buy microtransactions, then you have they, they developers basically just get more money is what I'm saying. And then because they get more money, it's easier for them to justify doing stuff like that. Like and what they want to mention too is like once they do a single player game like this, like they're done with it. Like there's nothing else they need to do. It's like, okay, well like we've added the DLC or whatever. So, while this might potentially have less potential for getting, well, we're being redundant, potentially less potential, this may have less potential for, like, getting consumers to spend more money on it, the nice thing is, like, once they develop the game and have it done, like, the game's done, like, there's no more that needs to come out afterwards. Whereas for the multiplayer, like, for them to say, like, do the balance adjustments or do the fine tweaks, like, they need to have people who, like, monitor the game see like how well it's doing and things like that and that takes like time and money to do because oh hello Because you still have to keep these people employed and they have to like monitor the game and so on and so forth right even though like, the change themselves might be less substantial they, it still it still costs money to have that stuff so I guess like the upkeep can be more expensive potentially but like it's, it's case by case scenario like and you never know so that's like my little round about microtransactions and like you know Burn. I don't think this is where we need to go. Nope. Okay. Um, so, and like, what I'm trying to say is like for StarCraft, I bought the microtransactions because I thought they were worth my money and I was interested in buying them. But for some other games, let's say like, for, you know, well, let's take Oblivion. They had, like, $15, like, horse DLC, which, you know, I look at that, I'm like, no way, man, I'm not interested. I'm not paying $15 so my horse can look a little bit nicer. Where some people, they will buy that stuff. So I slept kind of to the developers to, um, 
create incentives for people to buy their products. So if they do something that people aren't interested in buying, then they're not gonna buy. And like, and because it's a whole balancing act, like I think that the whole time, time I was like, oh yeah, like you just have my transactions or you don't, and so on and so forth. But there's all these other things I'm just like not considering. Must be the shotgun. So, something to think about, for example, is like you look at the whole like Battlefront 2 loot box debacle. Why can't I get headshots? Um, and for those of you who don't know what it is, like go look it up in the news. Basically, it's Star Wars Battlefront 2, like the new one developed by EA. Tried to have uh, loot crates that were pay to win, and they suffered a lot of negative PR for it, which I think that really hurt them as a company. Like, I think they lost value in stocks and stuff because of it. But that was like for them saying, okay, we want to try and get as much money as possible from like people who buy the game, and then we're going to add all the, like, these loot boxes and these pay to win mechanics. Which, like, in theory, I see where they're coming from because I like, get them a lot of money. I don't like that this is going. But, like, if poorly implemented, when this is the case I was trying to make, can end up being more costly and might not be worth the money. That thing is lovely, by the way. And I think the balance that you want to do is, like, you want to make... I wandered into some kind Call it. Hope not. You want to try the balance where it's like you can charge as much as possible without angering the consumers. And the the whole EA thing that was like a thing of a bit different because uh, those were pay to win mechanics, which I think were entirely different beasts altogether. And you know, I guess on top of microtransactions, there's lots of different kinds of microtransactions. Like there's say straight up purchases like oh if you want to buy a skin for league of legends like you can go ahead and just buy it like that's a microtransaction but then they have things where like you can open up loot boxes and you spend money uh you get more loot boxes which i think most of you know what those are but basically if you don't know what a loot box is it's something that you can open it up and you get random rewards which a lot of people like those whereas i don't like loot boxes because Okay, that's fine. I think loot boxes encourage uh, gambling tendencies, which I think just aren't good for people. I think encouraging people to gamble is like never a good thing. Like I'm actually pretty opposed to that. I would say, like, it's, well, okay, loot boxes is a whole can of worms. So I'm gonna have to really dig deep on this next episode. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and save again. We're getting a lot of good points to save the game, but I'm like, I will record more. All right, so can I open any of these doors? No, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, so I have a lot to say about loot boxes. And like, actually, if you have an opinion about loot boxes, like, please post a comment below. I'd be very curious to hear them, because everyone feels differently, right? Like, I know some people at work, they really like loot boxes. Me, personally, I think we could do without them. But, at the end, like, and I think that requires an explanation. I don't want to get into it, like, right now. So I'm definitely going to get my explanation. All right, there's syringes, let's go. And, okay, so. Crit chance could be good. Stock might even be better, though, too. Oh, we just don't have the money. Never mind, then. Alright, I guess we're just not going to have that option. So I'm going to go ahead and save. Alright, saving the game. Ulterior motives. Let's go and um 
I think what I'm going to do is end the episode here. So uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. So until then, bye.